What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video, and today we're going over the Stamina Warden DPS. Not much has changed for the Stamina Warden between Storm and Raymore. Unfortunately, they are still going to be the lowest or among the lowest in the Stamina and DPS tier list if one did exist. Um, while the bear did get a buff in that it does inherit things like Bloodthirsty now, it wasn't really enough to give Stamina Wardens a bit of an edge that they need to match uh, specs like the Stamina Templar or the Stamina Necromancer uh, DPS. Um, part of the reason why Stamina Warden's uh, DPS is going to be fairly low is the fact that we are going to be relying on the bear to carry us for our DPS, and the bear AI can be a little bit funky sometimes, plus it can get CC'd still, so if the bear AI doesn't cooperate, our DPS does end up going down by a fair amount. Now, all that being said, Stamina Wardens are still more than capable of pulling enough DPS to uh, clear all content in the game, uh, but you are going to need to work a little bit harder to match the same DPS that other players are able to get on higher DPS uh, specs. So, like the rest of our build videos, we will not be going over any sort of gear. That is going to be reserved for the Stamina DPS gear video, which should be popping up in the upper right-hand corner right about now. If you're, if you're interested in knowing what sort of gear you can be running on a Stamina DPS, feel free to check out that video. This video will be focusing in on the skills and the rotations that we are using. So, let's go ahead and get started here with our front bar. This is a dual wield bar. We're running Cutting Dive, Subtrain Assault, Bull Netch, Barb Trap, and Camouflaged Hunter. And then we have our Wild Guardian Ultimate. This is the Bear Ultimate. Now, with Camouflaged Hunter, you can replace this with any other ability you would like to run, depending on what you need. Camouflaged Hunter provides 3% additional weapon damage and it also provides minor berserk if you're able to deal crit damage on an enemy's flank. This makes it very, very flexible and probably the best ability to slot here, but you do have other options if you so desire. For example, if you want a self-heal, you could instead run something like Necron Vigor or you could run something like Green Lotus. If you want additional survivability, uh, but you don't necessarily need a heal, you could instead run something like Evasion for the major evasion. If you want more consistent Minor Berserk uptime, don't necessarily have to flank, uh, then you can run something like Bird of Prey, which gives you Minor Berserk while you have it slotted. Plus, it also gives you Mage Expeditions, which could be useful in certain trial fights. So you have a lot of flexibility here with this one spot here uh, on the front bar. Now, for our back bar, this is the bow bar. We're running Consuming Trap, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Barb Trap, and Camouflage Hunter. Again, these two are, again, for the mainly for the additional weapon damage you get from the Fighter Skill Passive, but you can swap these out as needed, depending on what exactly you need in your build. Then we have Wild Guardian once more, because it is a bear ultimate. This is a pet, so we do need to double bar it in order to maintain it across both bars. So that pretty much covers it for skills. Now let's talk about our rotation. The rotation is mainly going to be centered around subterranean assault. You can treat this as a three second dot, which means you're going to be doing subterranean assault, then two abilities, subterranean assault, two abilities. Much like the Magicka Warden DPS, this does mean you're going to have a little bit of a dynamic rotation. However, unlike this Magic Warden DPS, because you have fewer dots, you actually will end up getting more spambles out compared to a Magicka Warden. So if you guys uh, watched our Magicka Warden video, you'll notice that we are re-upping our dots more often than we're using our spamble, and that's just due to the, how many dots that the Magic Warden has to run. A Stamina Warden doesn't have quite as many dots. We uh, are... We only really need to maintain four dots. Uh, you could arguably drop Bullnet if you don't need the sustain, um, which is fewer than what the Magical Warden has to keep up with. Uh, so with that, you do get more Spambles out of the way here. Now with your Spamble, with Cutting Dive, you do want to pay attention to the off-balance debuff. So I highly recommend if you are playing on PC to get some sort of add-on that helps track off-balance. For console players, off-balance, the best visual cue is going to be what I like to call the swirlies around the boss's head. When you see the swirlies, that basically means that off-balance is applied to the boss. When you see that effect, you're going to want to spam Cutting Dive and pretty much ignore any other part of your rotation until Off Balance goes on the cooldown once again. This is because of that bleed. You can see that the bleed can stack, so you want to get as many stacks of that bleed going as you can during that Off Balance window. Now, in theory, you can again, you can get up to seven seconds of the bleed, uh, or just say seven stacks of the bleed, but more realistically, you're probably going to get anywhere between five to six, depending on what bar you're on, uh, when the off-balance goes up, and server uh, lag, and things like that. 
So really quick, a demonstration of the rotation itself. Again, very simple. I always like the pre-buff with bull Netch and then lay down my trap for the minor force buff. Start off with my back bar dots here. Then you do step here in assault. Two abilities. Step here in assault. Two abilities. Step here in assault. Two abilities. Now if you do a step here in assault and two abilities, this does mean you're going to have to break your back bar rotation like that. Just because you do have two abil three abilities on the back bar here. However, you can do something like this instead. You can just finish up your back bar rotation and then do a step here in assault two abilities once more. By doing so, you do make the rotation a little bit easier to main, uh, to keep track of, but you will end up losing DPS because you're getting fewer subterranean assault casts, and that is actually a pretty large contributor to your overall damage. So it's up to you whether you want to do just a static back bar rotation or if you want to break it with the subterranean assault. But again, the trade-off is more DPS if you do break your back bar rotation. Uh, a simpler rotation if you decide to keep your back bar rotation static. And again, once we get off balance, you are going to want to spam cutting dive and ignore the rest of your rotation. Once off balance is over, then you want to re -up, restart your rotation once more. So we're going to do a 21 minute limit part so you guys can get an idea of the amount of DPS that we're able to pull with a stamina warden. Now keep in mind that a trial dummy is not indicative of a actual raid parse. This is because the trial dummy is missing a couple of buffs and debuffs, and we are missing a couple of sustained tools that you would normally be getting in a raid, like Symphony of Blades, Center of Gums, etc. The dummy is missing a couple of buffs, like Minor Courage, uh, Zen's Martial Knowledge, etc. Uh, so in the actual raid, you might be able to get higher DPS. Now on the flip side of things, the trial dummy also doesn't do any sort of mechanics. You're not uh, you're not going to have to get out of any sort of red AOEs. Uh, you don't have to play the fight mechanics at all. So with those mechanics in play, you might end up dropping your DPS a little bit more. So something just you want to keep in mind here, the trial dummy does not indicate what you will pull in a raid. Trial dummy instead is to help practice your rotation and also gives you a clue of how you stack up compared to other classes using the trial dummy because it does standardize at the very least some of the buffs and debuffs that you would normally be receiving. So let's go ahead and get started with this parse. Always try to start uh, your back bar rotation by casting subterranean assault, even if that means you have a little bit of downtime on your dots. Just makes it a little bit easier to, uh, you know, deal with your back bar rotation that way. Speaking of downtime on your dots, I do want to mention that because of the changes that they've made to the Maelstrom bow, you can actually recast uh, Endless Hail a little bit early just because the last few ticks do the same amount of damage uh, so you don't necessarily have to let it run completely out in order to get the max amount of damage any longer. So you can see here we have the off balance on the swirlies so we end up spamming cutting dive. We only got three bleeds off with cutting dive that time. You can see we have off balance but we're in the middle of our back bar rotation. So we're not able to really get any additional bleeds off. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to break your rotation and spam cutting dive once you see that off balance is active. I personally just maintain the same rotation throughout and just let the bleeds land where they lie. I just find it easier that way uh, to simplify the rotation a little bit. You still get decent bleed damage even if you're only able to stack two or three. Obviously getting 5 or 6 is going to be ideal, but then you also have to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on in the fight. And that's not necessarily great for all people who play Stamina Warden. Once we hit execute phase, we're just going to continue our rotation. Stamina Wardens don't have an active execute ability. The bear does do 
to bear ultimate use when you use the ultimate does do more damage in execute range but because it uh, is an ultimate cast it doesn't count as a spam wall obviously Now the advantage of having trap on both bars basically allows you to cast trap no matter what bar you're on, which can be a little bit of an advantage depending on how comfortable you are with bar swapping. So again, we're entering execute range, we're not changing anything because we don't have an active execute. Our bear ultimate when we use it will end up doing more damage. Well, obviously, that's not a spamble. There you have it, that is the Stamina Warden DPS, and we actually pulled pretty decently well here, a little bit higher than what I normally pull here. 83.7k, uh, and you can see here that the bear does pull a decent amount of DPS, it pulls about 9.4k DPS. However, if the bear doesn't cooperate, that's where our DPS starts to go down. So, for example, in Sunspire, Crushing Swipe actually doesn't hit any of the dragons, so if we take out the DPS that we get from Crushing Swipe, for example, we would end up losing 4k DPS, dropping us to about 80k or so. So that is a pretty sizable loss in damage, all because the combat AI doesn't know that Crushing Swipe doesn't hit the dragon. Whether that's a hitbox issue or an AI issue, we're not exactly sure, but we just know that Crushing Swipe doesn't work on the dragons for whatever reason. And this is not the ultimate use. The ultimate use is actually uh, called Guardian Savagery here, uh, which is still pretty decently strong here. Now that it does work with Bloodthirst, you can see we can get very, very high max hits here. 196.8k is our max hit here when probably an execute on a crit when we use our ultimate. So very, very, very powerful uh, ultimate here, but we are heavily reliant on it in order to do our DPS. So as soon as the combat AI doesn't cooperate with us or it gets hard CC'd and is not able to do as much damage, that's when our DPS starts to go down a fair amount. Uh, so you can see here that Subterranean Assault does do the most amount of damage as our biggest DPS contributor, which is why we want to try to get as many casts of that out as we can, because it does do quite a bit of damage. But that pretty much covers it for this build video. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.